Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to talk about this effect where one of the pictures pushes the other picture out of the frame or squeezes in between two pictures, but I can't explain so I'm going to show you what um, effect I'm in and then I'm going to come back to you. Alright, so as you could see, this could be even considered three different effects, but I'm going to show you um, this whole sequence and how I made it. And we are going to start with the first one, so the easiest one. And for this uh, effect, you are only going to need um, the cookie cutter effect. And from the transitions, the squeeze one. I have the first two pictures right here, and we are going to need to place them on two different tracks and as always I'm going to pan crop them first to white screen like so and then I'm going to add a cookie cutter effect to the second picture and for that I'm going to use my half right cookie cutter effect and um, I made these presets myself because it's easier to use for me in the future but if you haven't seen how I made them or how to use cookie cutter I have a two-part uh, tutorial on that one and I'm going to leave the links in the description box but I added the half right to the second picture and I also need to add the half left to the first picture but I'm going to disable it for now and I'm going to place this in the position that I want it to be and I'm also going to place this one. Okay, so the idea is that the second picture comes in and squeezes this picture to the left half of the screen. So we are going to need to add the squeeze transition to the second picture and let's make this a little longer than I would normally do so 10 frames and since it will come from the right we are going to need the squeeze right left effect okay so what we are going to need to pay attention to is the start of the transition and the end of the transition let's go to the first picture and to the cookie cutter effect that we added to it the uh, half left so you can see how it looks uh, now, but we don't need the cookie cutter effect from the very beginning. So with this um, thingy right here, I'm going to find the end of the transition. So right here, because I reached the end of the transition and uh, pull this uh, key right here. So this is when the half right effect is applied. But since I said that I don't want it right here, for example, we are going to find the beginning of the transition, add the key to this, and make the cookie cutter effect a lot bigger so that it will fill the screen. So for that, we are going to increase the size and sometimes you are going to need to change the position so the center X or the center Y too. But with this, we are going to need to increase the size but pay attention that don't go way too far just try to find a point when the black bar disappears first so like now because if you uh, pull this thing to the right you will see that now we don't have that black bar so we are going to need to decrease the size a little bit on this point like so and I like to check all these key points to see that the size of this, um, so the size of this line stays the same. So it looks good to me. But with this, we are going to also need to move the picture when this uh, new picture comes in. And uh, again, we are going to find the beginning and the ending uh, point of the transition. So let's go first to the beginning and let's go to the ending and add a key point right here and with this I'm going to move it to the left and maybe even zoom out a little bit like this and let's look how let's see how it this looks so it looks like it squeezed the other one to the left Okay, so the next part, we are going to need this picture to squeeze right in between these two pictures. 
So I'm going to place this on top of the other two photos, pan crop it again, then add my free middle cookie cutter effect to this because I want the screen to be divided by three uh, columns and as I said in my cookie cutter tutorial you can get columns by choosing the shape square and then set the repeat Y to 10 and then uh, decrease or increase the size um, depending on how wide or narrow you want your column to be. Okay, so now we added the free middle cookie cutter. I'm going to position it now. And just like before, I'm going to add the squeeze transition to this picture, but I'm going to choose this one right here, the lateral um, transition. Okay, so what we want to do is push this one to the left and push this picture to the right when this one comes in. And for that, I'm going to uh, go to the cookie cutter effect to this picture right here. And as I said before, sometimes you need to change the size and sometimes you need to change the position. And in this case, we are going to change the position. Okay, so just like before, let's go to the beginning uh, point of the transition at the key right here. And with this, we are not going to change anything. Now let's go to the ending of the transition. So right here, add another key and click on this square uh, thingy right here. And then with your arrows on your keyboard, just push the left arrow until you will see that dividing line appear. So right about here. And again, go to the other pictures cookie cutter. So click on the event effects go to the beginning point, click on the create keyframe, go to the ending point, click on the create keyframe, and then push this, this time to the right until the black bar appears. So as you can see, it doesn't look like it squeezes the other pictures because we haven't um, pan cropped the picture, so we haven't made them move. So again, click this time on the event pan crop, find the beginning, add the keyframe, find the ending, add the keyframe, and now change the position like this. And I'm going to repeat the same uh, steps with this. So beginning keyframe, ending keyframe, and then move it. And you will see that now it looks a lot more realistic. So the last part of this effect is when this picture right here comes in and squeezes the middle picture down to the half of the uh, screen. So again, make this to be on top. I'm going to just make these, these pictures a little longer. All right, again, same thing, pan crop it to white screen. And now I'm going to add two cookie cutter effects to this picture. First of all, we are going to need the free middle because as I said, it will push the other middle one down. And we are going to need the half top. So now we have um, a horizontal row uh, that fills half of the screen. So if I uncheck this one, you will see that this is the uh, horizontal row. Now I'm going to position this one. And just like before, add the time frame transition find the squeeze and since it comes from the top, I'm going to look for the squeeze down. And this time we only need to change and um, edit this picture right here. So go to the cookie cutter effect to that one. And we are going to need to add the half bottom cookie cutter effect because we want this look. So when it, uh, the middle column is divided by two. Okay, but um, just like when we did the very first one, we are not going to need the cookie cutter applied from the very beginning. So when it comes in like this, we are going to look for the very ending of the transition because we want this cookie cutter to be applied to this point. So drag this key to that point and look for the beginning one. And just like we did uh, at the very beginning again, increase the size until it fills the screen, but don't increase it too much, just until the black bar disappears. And then check the next keyframe, because most likely you are going to need to change the size a little bit. And then check the 
other keyframes and it looks good now. But again, the next part is when we going to need to change the pen crop, so the position. So again, beginning point, keyframe, ending point, keyframe, and this time make it move downwards like so. And let's see how this one looks. So you can see it squeezes it down. And I'm actually going to add the black and white effect to this picture because I think it looks a lot more cohesive this way. So as you can see, it's quite easy actually if you get the hang of it. So the important uh, points to pay attention to is adding the cookie cutter effect, paying attention to the beginning and the ending point of the transitions because all of the changes are going to happen in those 10 frames or 16 frames or 2 frames or however long your transition is and just to try out new things. You can do a lot of things. I'm going to show you a few other examples uh, where you can do this effect. She's calling me in the dark. But as you could maybe tell, I didn't actually move the pictures all the time in this effect and I normally would, but it's a little bit more complicated and it took a little more time. But I'm going to show you how to do this on this simple um, effect. So when, again, the first picture is full screen and the second one comes in from the right and pushes the uh, full pictures to the left. So if I find the beginning of the transition. In the previous example, we clicked on create frame and then looked for the ending point and then again added a keyframe. We are not going to do this now because with this keyframe, we are actually going to zoom in a little bit. So like this, because most of the time I actually move my picture because it looks a lot more flowing, I think. Okay, so now we zoomed in till this point right here. Now the same goes that look for this point, click on the key, create keyframe, and then I'm going to move this to the left, just like we did before. But from this point, I'm going to actually move this one upwards and this one downwards, or this one down and this one up, I don't know yet. But let's go to the very beginning, and I'm going to move this up. And so with this, I'm going to need to move this down, but I'm actually going to push this a little, uh, little to the top and the very first point and then look for the ending and then drag it a little bit down. And now let's see how this actually looks like. So you can see that it, it's in constant motion, not like, uh, not like this one, but you can do whichever you want because sometimes I do this because I'm just way too lazy and I, what do I do? I actually add the new blue film camera effect and uh, just a little lower so, and then move this before the cookie cutter effect. So it gives it a shake and it gives it the motion, but I don't actually, um, um, pan crop it from keyframe to keyframe because I'm just lazy like that. So you can see that it looks like it's it's kind of in the motion, but you can see it's obviously it's just a shake. I hope this video could be actually useful for some of you. And if you have any more questions left, because I most likely couldn't explain everything in detail, then please uh, leave them in the comment section below and feel free to request anything that you would like to see me make a tutorial on. Yes, <laughs> and I'm going to see you hopefully in my next video. Bye, guys.